And this is now talking about mature requirement planning. So for us to arrive at a realistic plan, the main information that we have to add into search is what we call the item planning information. So for each item on a network location basis, we want to be able to define whether this is something that is produced or subcontracted. For every item, I could define a minimum stock level. So some people call this safety stock, but we call it minimum stock. It's the same concept. The system will make sure that our stock levels will not go below this minimum stock. We can define minimum order quantities. So for internal production, this could be the batch size that is most ideal for the production process. If you're talking about a raw material that you buy, this could be the vendor telling you that you cannot order less than this quantity. We also have order multiples, and this is typically defined by the pack size. So maybe one pack or one dozen, so you cannot order less than a dozen. For things that are manufactured, we would be able to define manufacturing lead times. So notice I have two lead times here. I have the setup lead time in terms of number of days, and I have here the manufacturing run lead time, which is in terms of number of days per piece. So as the order gets bigger, the longer the lead time. For things that are purchased, so let's say PM001, it would be defined here as purchased. Everything else is the same, except that for lead time, we would now be limited to an order or purchase lead time. So how many days does it take us to process an order, send it to our vendor, have them confirm, deliver to us, go through quality control and put on the shelf. So that's the definition of a purchase lead time. We also have here a function called a schedule. So if needed, we can actually define certain items to be planned on a lot per lot basis. So that means every demand line can trigger a plan recommendation, or it could be on a scheduled weekly or monthly basis. So imagine if you have certain materials which are sourced from the US or India or China, then maybe you want to combine the demand of a week or a month into one order to minimize the costs or warehousing costs. So that's essentially the schedule function over there. So with that information, we can then go into a quick transaction where the first thing I just want to highlight is forecast entry. So here, this is just a way for us to create sales forecasts in Sage. So I'm just creating a quick example here. So here, let's say for date, say for April, FG003, I want to forecast a demand of 99, and then I'll just create uh, one more line here. So let's say on May 1, I have another demand for 111. So this is just a quick example of a forecast, but obviously in the real world, typically we expect this information to be imported from Excel after you have gathered it from the sales and operations people. We can then trigger a planning run so this is now the planner calling out the network. So let's say this is uh, Southeast Asia for forecast, did I put 2020? Actually, it should have been 2021, but uh, uh, let's just uh, assume it's 2020. And then I can trigger the planning run. So this is now generating the MRP plan for us automatically. You can see here several options, whether to include a stock in Sage, purchase orders from the PO module, purchase requests, manufacturing orders, as well as sales orders. So all of those could be factored in. Forecast can also be consumed by uh, sales orders if we want it to be. But the end result is the system is making a demand supply analysis and generating a production plan for things that needs to be produced and creating an automatic purchase plan for things that needs to be purchased. So after generating the MRP plan, I can then call out the plan for network one up until let's say May, only for items with planned orders, I can then extract this information. So it could be that we have 10,000 items, but the system only requires us to create a plan or an action for these items. 
So if I look at FG003, I would see here a summary information that we have 19 on hand, 171 incoming, demand of 195. If we don't do anything, we would end up with negative I. There is a forecast of 210, and this is why the system is recommending the production of 320 to end up with 105 to meet minimum stock levels. So that's what the plan is telling us. If I go into the detailed inquiry, this is now showing us the exact documents that should, uh, that created that demand. So I can sort them by due date. Notice how I can see open MOs. So these are due or incoming quantities to be added to my current on hand of 19. I can see demand in the form of sales orders, as well as demand in forecasts. I can then see here the system creating planned orders, telling me I should be producing how much to be due on what date, and to consider the lead time, it should be started when. For me to get something on April 1, I need to start on March 31. So that's essentially uh, what the system is telling us. And this plan is considering all of the items within the bomb. So from top to bottom, all of the sub-assemblies, the raw materials, to the lowest packaging material, every one of them will be considered by the system when it comes to MRP planning. And then the last thing, of course, is to generate MOs or PRs. So for things that we need to buy, we only need to select the network, indicate the range of dates we want to process, to be received where, and this is now the recommendation of the system as to what should be purchased. I can just select which ones to follow. We assume that the planner knows best, so they can change the, the dates as well as the quantity. By clicking on post, this would then create a request in search. So from the planner, this plan information is transmitted to the buyers in search PO, and it's just a matter of converting requests to a PO. The same is for manufacturing. You can see there that there is a generate MO step, and this is now creating the same MOs as we discussed earlier on. Now that's on the planning side. One quick thing I just want to highlight here is that when we talk about production planning, just note we are not talking about capacity planning. So we don't include capacity in terms of plans. This is purely a material plan tool. Uh, capacity planning is much, much more complex and very, very much more expensive. So it's not included within production.